Morning punters, just me solo this week. Um, thought I'd take the opportunity um, to uh, run through my process of dealing with a tough day, given that we run smack bang right into one there at uh, Pakenham on Saturday. So now we managed to get through the entire spring without having a really poor day, but um, we got stripped out on uh, at Pakenham on Saturday, and the result was um, minus 59 and a half units. So that um, constitutes a 6% six percent reduction in uh, bank size. And I just sort of thought I'd talk through, you know, how I approach days like during the actual day and then following and the activities I undertake subsequent to that type of meeting. So the first thing um, uh, I'll talk about is just during the day. So there were some signs early on in the meeting on Saturday that um, there were horses that were improving dramatically from their recent form and there were also a number of other horses that weren't that were running well below their uh, their recent form so to me when that sort of thing happens and the results aren't making sense and I look at races one two and three um, that there is a bit of a red flag that goes up and while I don't um, ever really go down the path of wanting to abandon ship. What I do do is sort of think um, this is interesting. Perhaps I've got something wrong here in the way I've approached this meeting, and I need to bet carefully today. So I think when if there are signs that it's going to be a difficult day for you, the first thing you want to do is try and slow things down to slow your betting down as much as you possibly can. So, you know, on the other side of the coin, when things are running well, it's good to go with the momentum and just to bet confidently and go with it. So the reverse is also true. When things are going pear-shaped, you want to slow down as much as you can. So, you know, some people, that'll mean they want to pull the plug on a meeting. That's okay. Other people, it might mean they want to reduce their bet size. I think that's sensible. And even if you've set, like, in our case, 59 and a half units on the day was the total outlay. It constituted 6% of the bank. As long as you stay within those, within that range, I think that's okay as well. So I think it's just important that you, you know exactly what the maximum damage is going to be on a day like that and stay well within that, that range. The one thing you never want to do, I sort of know, I know this goes without saying, but I should say it, is that you just, that is absolutely the wrong time to increase your betting and to do any form of chasing. Uh, any Anything that, if you find yourself in that mindset at all, you need to just get up and walk away. That's just, that's an approach that can only end in disaster. So, so anyway, so uh, you know, then the, the day progresses, and you know, while we were around the mark in some of the races, I think there was a flaw in um, the way I approached the day. You know, which I can only um, identify in hindsight. Now, I, I went out there and walked the track on Thursday. And there was a subsequent uh, significant overnight rain after I'd walked the track. Now the track was, it's, a, it's a, such a different surface. It's a completely different type of turf. You know, my first thoughts when I walk onto it is that this, this turf belongs on a golf course, you know. It made you feel like throwing a bucket of balls down on the ground and having a hit, you know. But um, it's just so different to the other Melbourne city tracks where they're ryegrass. Um, and it's Kaikuya, so the Kaikuya is you know, more like steel wool that sits on top of the surface and grows sort of almost sideways, and it had been cut quite short, whereas the ryegrass tends to just get, you know, is, has a fairly long leaf that goes straight up in the air. So it's, it's just a completely different beast. And I would say that it's almost as if, you know, just to give a dramatic uh, example, it's almost like going from say Flemington to the Pakenham Synthetic. It's so different that it's going to suit a different type of horse. Now, the because it's early in the summer season, the roots on that course were not fully taken and the and, and the turf was a little bit loose. And I thought that would mean that they would get into the track of, uh, enough to make it a really strong test of fitness. Now in hindsight, so I went looking for horses that were fit, had a run in the distance range, you know, all the things I like typically 
they also assessed that they that, that those lanes four to ten would dominate. Now, in uh, looking back at the meeting, that part of it was right, but the the fitness testing um, running the distance range aspect was completely wrong. Now, in the end, what happened was we had two horses winning on uh, resumption, Belsonic and Nasdex. Uh, there were another five winners that were early in their preparation and up in distance, and there were two winners that were um, staying at the same distance. Now, the only one that was back in distance at all was Armadeus. He knew it was only 50 metres and he'd only had one run in the distance range. So he was the outlier on the card, I suppose. But it, the way the track played lent itself to horses early in their preparation with good sprint in their legs. They didn't have to be at peak fitness. They just had to have the dash to get to those advantage lanes first and establish a gap on the chasing pack. And... It was very hard for the chasing pack, those fitter horses, to make up the ground. And uh, that was the flaw in my assessment on the day. So, um, look, I think that's what we can learn from the meeting. So we can learn that the trips to Pakenham for horses coming off the other city tracks are going to throw up a different type of winner. It's a different surface and has to be assessed that way. I think it'll change later in the summer, but uh, these, you know, this particular meeting being early in the summer, I think that's going to be the order of the day. And um, I think the Packenham surface, now that it's had a few years to uh, bed itself in there, and um, it needs to be treated as a completely a horses for courses type um, venue, I think. So, you know, I, I think it, it's easy to just sort of blame the, the track and the circumstances and say, oh, that form means nothing. But I think it has a meaning. So I think if those if those horses went on to a, um, a similar set of circumstances where you had a very, a track that was advantageous for horses with good sprint in their legs where it wasn't going to be a strong test of fitness. So. That, that synthetic type racing or even r good track racing, you know, with the grass cut particularly short, you know, like a firm good three or even a good two, I think that form would sort of, would have some currency. So um, there's definitely some learning to do from a meeting like that. Okay, so that, and that's that's part of the, the post-race assessment process that, that I've gone through over the past couple of days. So the, the other part of it is, okay, so we've got through the day, we've slowed our betting down, we've limited the damage to the 59 and a half units, that was the, as bad as it was going to be. So when the meeting's finished, you have to accept that result. And so that's the, and you, you, however you record your results, you put it in, and you say that's now our position, and we go forward from here. Now, I sort of, when I have a day like that, I like to just um, not put the cue in the rack, really but just be a bit little bit deliberate going forward at, in the next meeting I bet in so I had a look at Werribee on Sunday and I thought it was all quite marginal and so for instance the cup there um, Night's Watch looked fairly obvious however I thought Werribee was a tricky track for that horse and I wasn't keen on taking the short price I did give some thought to, to betting around him in that race but I just decided look um, you know Let's bypass that day and we'll uh, dust ourselves off, get back in completely on top of things and then get ready to, to, suit, to, to um, do some strong betting at the, at the right meetings this week. So now as it turns out, we've got Mornington on Wednesday. It's a Finnish looking meeting and then Ge Geelong on Thursday. There's a Mooney Valley meeting on Friday night. So between those three things, I'm sure we'll find opportunities. And then the good news is we get back to Caulfield on Saturday. So we can take a completely fresh approach with Caulfield and get back on the front foot. And the, the whole aim of this week, after you've had a, a tough day there at Packham, is to turn things around and get back on the on the front foot and get things going back in the right direction. So that's, that's the, the, the process I tend to go through. And uh, I think slowing down and doing less betting when you've had a tough day is a really good idea. Uh, the, the last thing you want to do is to um, 
get involved in races that are marginal at that, at that point and compound the error. You just want to reach for the brake a little bit. So when things are going good, the accelerator's fine. When things are going not so good, the brake's what you want. Just to slight, pull back a little bit, get everything right back in the right space, get things on your own terms, and only move forward when you when you find opportunities that suit your style. So that's, that's what I'll be doing this week. And uh, I'll be making every effort to um, bounce back strongly and get things back on the front foot. All right, punters, I hope that's uh, some help with uh, dealing with the uh, psychology of punning. And I'll be back next week to uh, let you know how it all went. Cheers, punters.